Well, I love that umbrella guy. <laughs> My wife and I love that umbrella guy. Oh, we love that umbrella guy. I love that umbrella guy. <laughs> Hey there, so today before we begin, if you like this kind of content, make sure that you're subbed, make sure that you hit that bell for daily notifications, and if you want to go further, you're under no obligation to do so, but say you love this channel and you want to help it out, links are in the description. One of those is the case of the littlest umbrella, all ages love crafty and tell, plus another comic book on another tier, check that out, I'll talk more on that at the end of the video. Also, keep an eye out on live stream because right now I've been giving away some Vic Mignogna signed merchandise and I want you to be able to get some. I went to Anime Matsuri, I picked up some stuff I wanted to give back to the fans and I've already given out one, maybe two by the time you watch it, so stay tuned for that. More on that at the end of the video. So today I want to return to that wonderful world of anime where it crosses over with comic books and the wonderful world of hatred that you get for doing your own thing. Now, I recently, like I said, went to Anime Matsuri, and when I did, there were so many people that seemed to lose their freaking minds. It was absolutely amazing to see that, too, considering the reality out there they should be afraid of, because what I did was meet dozens upon dozens of good people. I met people that really, they knew about what was going on with comic books, and knew about what was going on with anime and Vic Mignogna, and they had helped support a book to $85,000. I mean, we're talking about success that you normally would not see for people just coming out the gates, but these days, well, the old school pros, all they are are dinosaurs that don't understand dinosaurs. Now, we could talk about a few other people out there, too, like, say, these two pros, pros that I've exposed as Kickstarter frauds. And when I talk about frauds, I mean people that have not delivered products for over five years now. But you're talking about folks that have worked for DC, that have worked for big companies, small stuff alike, and yeah, they've cheated their consumers. And well, you know, when you talk about that, they treat people like absolute trash. Here's one we have saying that, hey, that guy out there, he wears a mask because he doesn't want to be the next hate monger exposed like one of those Charlottesville neo-Nazis and have to deal with the consequences of his actions. AKA, we're going to pin a label on you and we're going to destroy your life. That's the kind of people that we deal with out there. Then you have another one like B. Claymore, loving that check mark by the way, saying wrong Richard. He's afraid SJWs will beat his pregnant wife with umbrellas. So he's sitting around telling his little jokes about beating my pregnant wife after talking about too, I can't have my my wife or my kid come to this convention because these people, they have gone out of their way to make sure that they know that they want to try to hurt me, that they want to try to cause problems. And this would be the way that they do it. They would go after occupation, but also they would go after that one thing out there that you care more about than anything, and that would be family. Now, interestingly, none of these people had the stones to say this kind of stuff to my face. I found out that being six foot seven and running around in a hockey mask fashioned after Jason Voorhees, maybe that was a tad bit intimidating. Or maybe it's just that being a keyboard crusader is not a hard job at all, but actually having to face off with someone and deliver hatred, that's another thing altogether. Now, one of the people that I really, really found interesting there was Gail Simone. And Gail Simone's lack of understanding with specific words out there, too, which I'll bring up in a moment. Now, the reason that I found anything that Gail Simone added here interesting at all was because Gail Simone is the reason that this channel looks the way it does. At one time, I used to just talk about comic books, good ones that I thought... And and you know, those things, they were harder and harder to pick up. 
And then, after a little while, I started asking this weird question. I started asking, who are the people behind those? Now, as I watched the interaction with people, I would cover fewer and fewer comics. But this interaction here, Gail Simone, actually caused me to go out to give a response video because she pretty much asks for it. And by the way, Gail, you owe me money. So you can see Gail Simone actually having a little exchange here with someone and she's talking about the artist John Malin. John Malin made a statement that these folks hated and well they all went absolutely nuts. When they went absolutely nuts about it I found it rather hypocritical because another thing that they had been endorsing is calling all of us alt-right trolls. If you didn't like what they said well you're all alt-right trolls and then they listed different types of trolls. One type was a concern troll. Oh as a consumer I'm bothered by. Another one was a blackface troll. Oh, well, you only have five followers and don't have a picture out there? Well, of course, you can't be a quote-unquote person of color. You can't be a woman. No, you can't be any of that. What you are, you're wearing digital blackface. Gail Simone endorsed that, and I brought that up in a statement, and Gail Simone said, yeah, I will give you a dollar to put together coherent thought. Bet I get to keep my dollar. So I put together my first video there, and of course it was very coherent. I even did a little bit of a reprise to it, putting a little bit of music to it as well. But Gail Simone, ah, nowhere to be found. Now Gail loves taking shots at people too. And I think one of the reasons that she likes doing that is because she's seen this little number go up. You know that current year clap? She gets to see these days if you use things like, ooh, viciously attacks women, or you use straight white male in a post. Watch all of those likes soar. What's interesting is if you look at those numbers and you look at comic book numbers, however, you'll notice that comic book numbers keep declining while these artists continue to practice this type of stuff. It's what I've said about this and one of the reasons I act how I do when I meet people, whether it's in person or I try to meet people that say back things and on, I try to always be nice because it only takes one negative interaction to tear down a lifetime of trust. And also, one really positive interaction can build trust for generations. So you've got to keep that in mind. These people, however, they don't understand that. And this was their answer to, oh, going out there and wearing a mask. I love that comic skaters are peeing their pants trying to say that a guy who viciously attacks women from anonymity, viciously attacks women. Hmm, is some kind of brave warrior, and not just another sad chicken shit embarrassment. Guys, you back the wrong trilobite trilobite. That's a very interesting word to pull out there. I mean, remember, this person is a professional rider. These are trilobites. Hmm, what is a trilobite in case you're wondering? Huh, well, the trilobites, they are a group of extinct <laughs> uh, marine arthropods uh, from the, you can see all of the stuff about it, and what I thought she might have been aiming for was troglodyte. Hmm, a person who lived in a cave. A person who is regarded as being deliberately ignorant or old-fashioned. Huh, you know. But what do I know? I'm not a stunning, stunning winner like this person. What's interesting, too, is viciously attacking women. My pregnant wife is apparently not a woman when people are making jokes about beating her. That kind of stuff is A-OK. -okay. When I can't bring my own daughter to a signing of a book that is about her. Well, my daughter apparently is not female. My, my daughter doesn't count in there because you know that's not viciously attacking. Now what's viciously attacking is going out and say calling someone fat. Not Gail Simone. I've never gone down that road yet. But calling someone else that after they've caused the hatred and animosity that they've had. I guess that's viciously attacking. Or maybe it's just disagreeing. Or maybe standing up for yourself. Maybe that's it too. But it's amazing. Like these people play this weird game about come and fight me IRL. You know, this uh, 
idea that you gotta take off the mask and show me your face, even though, well, you know, anonymity, attacking people anonymously, yeah, being six foot seven, wearing a hockey mask in the middle of a place, and live streaming it day in and day again, that wasn't putting a target out there that you could have looked at, walking outside by yourself, again, live streaming it, no, that stuff, that was all chicken shit, none of that actually did anything. What they wanted me to do was leverage my job, leverage my family, so they could have gone after them, so they could have intimidated and tried to shut me up. Why? Because, well, as you've seen with both Comicsgate and with the things we talked about with I Stand With Vic, we have been very effective in delivering a message. And that message is we will not roll over and play dead. We will have a voice as consumers. We will have a voice as just people out here. We will not let 280 80 character culture bolt us over. We will not let corporations and corporate shields tell us what to do. No, we will decide what we do and we will have a voice. Hmm. Now, there's a lot more of this stuff too, and I think I'll cover some more of it later on, but I thought that this might be a fun time to go out and talk about it. But anyhow, you tell me what you think about this stuff. Now, again, if you like this kind of content, make sure that you're subbed. Make sure that you hit that bell for daily notifications. And if you want to go further, there are links in the description. One of those, again, is the case of the Littlest Umbrella. And is the answer to people like Richard Pace, to B. Clay Moore, or to Gail Simone. It is the answer that we put out there saying, hey, if they will not deliver a product and treat you professionally, hey, we can offer you something better. Now, it's been interesting to see the way that these folks act, especially Especially when you have success with that because they hate the idea that you can be successful because you circumvent their gatekeeping. That's another thing that happened with I Stand With Vic. These people wanted to burn someone down and do it with impunity. Well, fans spoke up. They raised money and they didn't allow that to happen. They had a voice and they used that voice and they used those wallets and those denominations to turn something into effective resistance. Leave me comments though pro or con about this stuff. Let me know what you think about it. And also, I want to end here by saying that I appreciate you. These people, they have forgotten their consumers. Their industry shows it, and that's fine. Let them forget. Let them walk away, because at the end of the day, they're the ones who suffer for it, not you. You can find something better. I want to say I appreciate you for showing up. I appreciate everything you do, and I was happy to meet so many of you. I carry a lot of positive memories there, and I'm proud to be part of these communities. So thank you. I appreciate you, and we'll do this again very soon. Thanks.